in the building. So it's time for some preliminary conclusions. So who is going to take it, Mr. Nobre? Yeah, I, I think I, I have some ideas that were uh, uh, very many incredibly interesting um, presentations uh, from both sides. And uh, my first, uh, my first thing that, that came to my mind when Jan was presenting his thermal pictures there, we did this calculation for the for the Amazon. How much water is released there? We we did it independently and checked each other numbers. Uh, it was like 20 billion tons of water evaporated by trees in the Amazon basin per day, which is larger volume of water upwelling than the Amazon River discharges in the Atlantic Ocean, which is 17 billion tons in the, in the same period. And that amount of water going up, uh, of course, needed the solar radiation to, 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 and we calculated the amount of energy. And it was like equivalent to 50,000 Itaipu Dam, is hydroelectric is the largest uh, hydro dam in the world, which is in between Paraguay and Brazil. And it was like 50,000 of the largest dam, just to, 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 to match what the Amazon is doing for free there. And so, in, in other words, it's a huge pump, monstrous. Yeah. It's a size si that- Silent. Silent. <laughs> and nobody is invisible. Yeah. You, you don't see the evaporation coming, ex except if it condensates a little bit. Oh. So this is just a remark that this kind of services there are, uh, we tend to put all together under the name, disguising name of nature. We say nature, nature is doing, it. it's doing for free. Even when you can see nature is doing something, you are not given the technological dimension behind it. We are anthropocentric in many ways. Because if we build a robot, like I saw many this morning, uh, uh, we tend to think that this is incredibly important. But if a tree is doing these miracles, like Professor Mark and, and Jan and others have mentioned here, uh, we tend to say, oh, OK, take for granted. You don't have this association of technology to nature. You say, you say the most you can see is that it's complex. Oh, it's a complex, so like our hand. It's a complex manipulator. A robot is a technological manipulator. You don't compare the hand of a robot with the hand of a human. But at the end of a human, it's inconceivably complex and technological. So this, there is this new, new branch of engineering called biomimicry, which is the, the launched by this biologist uh, in, in the US uh, in the 90s, uh, the revolution of biomimicry, which is basically to look into nature as a technological uh, uh, achievement that has matured over four billion years. So trial and error, evolutionary process, uh, increasing complexity, as uh, Anastasia has mentioned a number of times, that what you have when you have a functional forest, you have an incredible technological park right there, much larger than Skoda and Toyota and so on. And we tend not to value this technology from, from what it is actually. If you were able to put a microscope on the top of any living thing, you will see complexity there and technological miracle, kind of as Jan has mentioned many times. 200 stomata per square millimeter. Imagine. <laughs> and if you, ju if you just look to the, to the cell, the guard cell, that surrounds the stomata, each one of those 200 per square millimeter, uh, and the complexity, the biochemical complexity for the cell to open and close, depending on on, on this logic that has been built in, 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 into this living creature there for, for millions of years. We, we, we're just, I mean, in, in comparing our technology, the most advanced of our technology, uh, to, to nature, na nature technology, we are, we are beautiful, really. No, I'm not dis despising, I love technology, I love computers, everything, but we should have uh, learn, we should learn to be humble, really, when we compare to nature. And not 
not being, uh, how to say, uh, when, when you use something for, uh, for your own sake, and not given the, the value that that thing has in itself, just because miniaturization and automation is the rule in nature. Miniaturization make it invisible because it's so small. It's dealing with atoms and molecules. Automation is because it goes out of your conscience, like a car that is very advanced. You don't have to worry about the engine or anything is taken care of by the, by the automatic things. And that's our problem with nature. We do not regard what we don't see working in its mechanisms. This is our Western type of culture. When you go to the tribes in the Amazon, the Indians, the natives, they have a thing called uh, uh, veneração, how do say that? Uh, revere, revering, revering. They have a sacred, uh, they ascribe to nature a sacred value. They respect it as if it were a spirit that has an incredible uh, worth in itself. And by revering nature, they protect that technology that's there. They know they cannot go without it. They know they are children from the earth. They cannot just step on the earth like, you know, ignorant animal. They, 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 have, to, they have this respect. In Western society, we lost that respect because of science and technology. We have learned that anything that has not been demonstrated doesn't exist. We ignore it. You cannot, pay a, you cannot publish a paper about something that's not existing. I, 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 <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, just, uh, I feel like what Anthony is saying, but the question is, why is life so complex? Why? Why? Not only we don't uh, value that, but we don't understand that this complexity is because it is very complex to be sustainable. Because life sustains itself. Like Professor Kozak, if I recall to correctly, said, we cannot stabilize soil. Our soils are all degrading. We haven't learned to stabilize any of the environmental components. Neither the atmospheric CO2, neither soil, nor the water cycle. We are absolutely ignorant as a species with anything regarding to resilience and sustainability. All we can do is to take resources and process them. Uh, but this uh, absolutely um, fantastic complexity of life, which can be estimated, and we did it actually, Every cell processes information at a rate equal to that of a modern personal computer. Every cell. And Earth is covered by several cells per each uh, with a layer. So, and you have this distributed network all the time, uh, seven days a week, uh, monitoring the environment and reacting immediately to all disturbances and uh, uh, sustaining the resilience. And this algorithm works already for 4 billion years. You see, it is enormous. And this complexity is uh, needed to perform this very complex task. And I think that we need to bear in mind that the most uh, in, uh, complex thing is not to produce something from something, but to become sustainable. Uh, mm -hmm. Sustainable is not a good word, I agree. In Russian also we don't have a translation, but uh, we call it stability, but just uh, uh, conditions which allow for the perpetuation of life, yes. for the forever, yes. forever. Yes. And yes. this is an inherently complex task. Just, just Thank you, to... thank you. Just completing this, this uh, notion, um, it's basically, Many, many, many engineers are now discovering that if they look to nature to copy, to mimic, yes. uh, they can advance enormously. Uh, for example, the paint industry are going to look into the wax uh, that covers the leaves and trying to develop paints that are self-cleaning. Uh, all this, you, you go into bio biomimicry, it's exploding now. 
So in our group, and then coming down to, to what a conclusion for, 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 for this wonderful day here in, in, in Prague, uh, it's really memorable, uh, I think, in many ways, because uh, it's not very often that you have people from natural sciences talking to people in, in, in technology and engineering and architecture. Uh, so in, in coming to a conclusion, I think the main thing that we could uh, aim at is that we recognize that technology can help uh, in many ways to solve the recovery and restoration of living systems, especially in the extreme cases like deserts and, and other places. And on, on the other, in the reverse, uh, that natural, the view of the natural world could aid in the technological world. Like, like, for example, as Jan showed you, the air conditioning capacity of greenery for cities. Or like uh, architects who look into a termite mound to get inspiration to build a building that has uh, a circulation that keeps temperature. It's just as a matter of, uh, you know, the termites know better. <laughs> yeah. uh, they have developed ways to fix it. And that's true for everything, even econom economics. E e oikos, casa, or house from Greek, gave birth to economy, eco, and ecology. So economics, when economics doesn't ignore uh, externalities or external course, it will uh, be more sustainable because that's the way nature, nature has been managing the environment without the dogma of growth, infinite growth. It grows information infinitely, but not mass. And, and, and the way it interacts with the energy system of the Earth is incredibly fine-tuned to keep Earth comfortable. And because we are losing that, and because we are now feeling un, un, unwelcome on, on this planet, because we have been bad uh, guests, now we start to what's going on, what's wrong. The geoengineering comes to fix or try to fix things, and it's, as I said earlier, it's very dangerous if you don't understand what you're, you, because we don't handle atoms and molecules. We, we cannot do, we cannot compete with, with nature the way nature does, as, as Anastasia pointed. So if we can agree on that, we have the first line of our MOU uh, already written, that we can collaborate in, in this uh, concept, philosophically speaking, uh, uh, in a way that we can take advantage uh, from, a, from a biological, biotic pump point of view, and we are getting into also practical projects, trying to reestablish the biotic pump uh, with people from the technological side and design, etc. cetera, uh, as also uh, uh, Uli has shown a nice, uh, like they're doing in, in Saudi Arabia, etc. cetera. Uh, on this ground, that we, from the technological side, you admit that nature is superior, far superior in, in technology itself, raw technology. And from our side, that technology can help fix and, and, and considering respecting the way that nature functions. Uh, like, uh, I don't know if we'll have another opportunity to discuss, you know, on the ground projects. And this is the other part of the MOU, I guess, uh, is how we are going actually to, down to business, you know, money. Uh, tomorrow task. Tomorrow task, yeah. okay. Yeah. Okay, because, uh, that, that's where we go to real uh, action, you know, and, and uh, well, that's what I had to, to say. Uh. Yeah. Signature all okay, guys. Guys. because I think that we respect nature principle and uh, our concept is only start up for sufficient water because for regreeing in, in Desert, we, we, we need water. Yeah, initially. And, and the, the only initial. Yeah. Initial. Because, uh, for example, we can this infrastructure construct all and finish with our thinking about problem because I have water for my garden, for garden in a hotel, in the housing, etc. etc. But it's not it's not the end because I can start say that. Biotech power for me is alpha and omega. So it's start and, 
and, and, and now in only we are only initiation for sufficient water. And the problem is in financial situation because it's a very expensive. Very expensive. When the Czech Republic will be deserved, we need for regreening 200 years state budget. <laughs> I have, uh, I have uh, a question, if I may, which is just to, to, to think about, you know, with me, uh, being an optimist by, by nature. Uh, when uh, there is a um, successful project and uh, within 15 years or so, the uh, smart biotic pump will bring back the, the biotic pump and the water starts to flow from the mountains back to the to the uh, uh, valleys instead of bringing it from the sea. from the sea is it going to be, be working the other way around too <laughs> think about it that that's for for, for the urban um, planners and, and design so you know because we all believe it, it works so if it, in 15 years it starts to, to, uh, to, to work based on, on the nature, which is the ultimate goal to, uh, to, to bring the smart technology, so, so the, the, it uh, sort of re, re, resurrection. Uh, yeah, resurrection. Resurrection. Life is helpless against death, yeah. and desert is death. So we can here use our brain for this resurrection. So, so just yeah. gentlemen, you know, it's, um, because we don't, uh, we, we don't want to sit here in 15 years and say how we are going to uh, re uh, reverse the, the, the smart biotic pump to get from the, the water from the mountains to the sea because it's flooding the, the, the wall. <laughs> Thank you. It was an optimistic note, yes. isn't it? Perfect philosophical, I would say even biblical conclusion <laughs> <laughs> we've made and we have a lot of to, to think about, but the formal part of today's program is ended, but... Just, just a, a, a quick note that was in the program, the MOU. Uh, we have a draft uh, that we prepared, just a very initial draft. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should distribute uh, to all the, the parties yes. to, today yes. this draft that was prepared by, by Uli. Mm -hmm. okay. And... Uh, and we discuss, uh, you read through and think, take notes, suggestions, and sure. tomorrow we, we try to close it right. and sign and take pictures. Yes. Good. <laughs> Good job. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. As the program says, so we are supposed to meet well. tomorrow. At Thank you.